Today we'll be covering the paper, Why Minimal Guidance During Instruction Does Not Work, published in 2006. The author's argument differentiates guided and unguided, or minimally guided, instruction. They acknowledge a gray area in between, so what they consider guided and unguided is important. Unguided includes minimal teacher intervention. Here, the learner discovers and reinvents facts, concepts, and procedures of a field. They aren't given all of this information, so they have to search for it or go through the practice of a researcher in the field to learn it. There can be some teaching, for example, introducing general problem-solving approaches. The authors note that historically, unguided instruction has been called discovery learning, experiential learning, problem-based learning, inquiry-based learning, and even constructivist teaching. In guided, direct teaching, the teacher takes a hands-on approach to help the student learn existing, well-known facts, concepts, and procedures of a field. The teacher could use expert modeling and process worksheets to scaffold different levels of worked examples. The student isn't passive, as direct teaching might sound. In guided teaching, the teacher embeds into the curriculum task-specific approaches that require attention-driven effort. The authors present a theoretical defense of guided instruction based in cognitive architecture and epistemology. The cognitive architecture argument is that we know enough about the brain now that we should be able to design curricula that much more efficiently and accurately get information into long-term memory. In my opinion, we can view this analogously to fitness. Modern sports science helps us efficiently reach peak physical capability. We could go back to acquiring physical capability the old way, by hunting animals or working in a field, but that would be incredibly inefficient. The authors point to our knowledge of working memory and long-term memory. Working memory maintenance is limited to less than 30 seconds without rehearsal. Capacity is limited to seven, maybe four plus or minus one items. While processing information, that might be lower, like two or three. Long-term memory is unlimited in a lot of ways, the goal of learning, then, is to create or strengthen knowledge schema in long-term memory while going through the bottleneck of short-term memory. Someone doing unguided learning will have to split their working memory amongst new information, current problem-solving and information searching, and other effects of unoptimized material. Someone doing guided learning with an optimized curriculum would deploy all their cognitive resources to manipulating and encoding new information into long-term memory. The authors also argue we need to optimize the learner's long-term memory. Essentially, if the learner doesn't have the right existing cognitive schema, new information has nowhere to go. Thus, an optimized curriculum in guided learning would minimize this wasted effort and maximize integration. The epistemological argument builds on the prerequisite long-term memory argument. Experts in a field have expert cognitive schema in long-term memory. That's why they're able to practice successfully in their field. The authors point out that novices don't have this expert schema yet. Therefore, there is no expectation that they should be able to correctly perform unguided practice. Philosophically, the authors argue that unguided learning advocates have mistakenly equated the processes of a field with the knowledge of a field. This misguided notion leads not only to teaching by inquiry, but to teaching inquiry as the subject, ignoring the existing schemas of the field. Empirically, the authors note two major effects that support the theory. In what they call the worked example effect, novice students learn more studying worked examples than solving the problems on their own. Potentially, this is because studying worked examples directs the student's attention to new information, whereas studying to solve the problem involves searching long-term memory for solutions. On the other hand, the authors note the expertise reversal effect. Here, novices benefit from a more guided approach, and experts benefit more from an unguided approach. Practically, this means a learner can rely more on internal guidance as they become an expert. Ultimately, the authors claim guided learning results in better immediate recall of facts, long-term transfer, and better problem-solving skills. While maybe some of these conclusions seem obvious now, the authors point out that the original unguided recommendations came about in the 1960s, and we didn't know as much. 
Some of the questionable theoretical inspiration for experiential learning, for example, came from Kolb's learning style inventory, which has not held up statistically. That's not to say all unguided theory is bad. The authors defend the idea of a student actively constructing and understanding. In empirical studies, unguided learning has performed worse than guided learning. Practically, unguided learning might cost more and leave students lost and frustrated. In some studies, unguided learning actually leads to decrease in student performance. This could be from students internalizing misconceptions and incomplete knowledge, internalizing in a disorganized way, or missing parts of expert schema. One example of disorganized internalization is the failure to separate basic content and the context of the problem it was learned in. An example of lacking expert schema is a failure for medical students to reason forward from data to diagnosis, instead getting stuck reasoning backwards and checking individual hypotheses. One survey found that medical students using problem-based learning spent more hours studying while achieving lower scores and unchanged residency selection. Ultimately, the authors acknowledge the possibility of bringing the benefits of guided learning to unguided learning approaches. They caution against repeating historical mistakes and recommend backing up all techniques with empirical results. <laughs>